The Antiquities Coalition is focused on cultural racketeering, and that's the use of antiquities as a means to fund and support terrorism and organized crime. We found soon after the Arab Spring, when there was a massive increase in looting in the Middle East, that this wasn't just an issue that was uh, linked to one particular country, like Egypt. In fact, the FBI considers it one of the top global crimes. Deborah is blessed with a trifecta of talents. She generates creative yet practical ideas. It is this skill set, plus her leadership abilities, which has enabled her to help the Antiquities Coalition uh, become the foremost organization in the world for combating uh, cultural racketeering. After the Egyptian Revolution in January 2011, it was seeing the Egyptians come together and hold hands to protect the Egyptian Museum that made us feel that we should try and do our part to help when they were in a time of crisis. And it wasn't too long afterwards that we saw the rise of Daesh. And they created a Ministry of Antiquities under their Ministry of Extraction. And they encouraged people to go out and engage in illicit digging because that was soon to become a significant source of funding for them. We created the Culture Under Threat Conference with its initial launch in Egypt. And the goal of this conference is to bring together members of the Arab League governments to first share their experiences and look at this problem as a region. After several years of negotiation, Secretary of State John Kerry and the Egyptian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sama Shokri, signed last November a Memorandum of Understanding. Daesh has engaged in a march of destruction across Iraq and Syria. They attacked the Mosul Museum, dynamited the Judeo-Christian Tomb of Jonah. They ransacked the ancient site of Nineveh, where the first stirrings of civilization arose, demolished the spiritual gate of an ancient Assyrian palace, also razed entire temples in the ruins of Palmyra in Syria, under the Hague Convention, it is defined as a crime of war when you are intentionally going after civilizations, trying to eradicate the past, intimidate and kill local populations, and use heritage as a means of intimidation. One of our growing concerns is the use of the sale of antiquities coming from the Middle East to fund homegrown terrorism. It's significant because to pull off a terrorist attack like we saw in Paris, only costs between $10,000 to $20,000. We have been working very closely with the government of Egypt to train registrars in how to conduct inventories so that in the museums when they've come under attack, they can pull up a list, they can circulate to Interpol, and we can move very quickly to put out a red alert to watch out for these items on the open market. I'm absolutely delighted that Deborah Lair will be receiving the World Monuments Funds Hadrian Award. When I became Treasury Secretary, it was Deborah that conceived America's new engagement strategy with China, the, the Strategic Economic Dialogue. And today, Deborah is a pillar of the Paulson Institute, where we're working to strengthen U.S.-China relations. One of the first programs that we started at the Paulson Institute was on urban sustainability. China has placed a big priority recently in preserving historic cities. And the World Monuments Fund work in places like Yunnan Province, in Shashi Village, where it has restored the central marketplace, is a very important example of the type of work that can be done in helping them to preserve their own heritage. The Antiquities Coalition and World Monuments Fund share a vision in the goal of empowering local communities. We should be going in and helping give these local communities the necessary training and capacity building and skills to be able to better protect the sites, the monuments, the artifacts, the museums themselves.